All right, Donovan Gray working with you at 49 and 185 pounds. You had some decent skills, but everything was kind of a golfing topspin. You weren't quite getting uh, all your legs and hips and body into it, kind of falling off to the side a little bit. You can see there's a loopy swing here. That bat head doesn't cut through the ball. It wants to loop up over the top, getting a lot of topspin. Uh, evident here that your body angle and your hip rotation is good, but it's that snap. It's not a cutting snap. So we went to work, worked on getting a better hip rotation angle. This throwing drill really helps get the hips of the upper body into it to rotate and throw. Now here's a trainer we designed that gets you on the A to B path and helps you go from start to finish. And it worked very well getting you on a better path rather than looping up and going up or down. This helps guide you on the path of the rope. From that point on the perfect snap, the first was a little wild, but then you made it much more compact and short and getting the snap triggered much faster worked out very well. Frisbee throw, of course, helps with the hips. And then on to the real work of the perfect snap. What's the best way, the strongest way you can hit an object and take that bat on a straight line? And then we simply just change the plane on that and we go ahead and, and drive at an up angle. Here you do the sitting perfect snap, which is great. You rotate, snap, and cut to the point of impact. I think that's one of my favorite drills. Point of contact we worked on. Getting it back, hitting it into the bag forces you to trigger the snap much earlier rather than chasing it out ahead. That worked phenomenally well. Now off the tee, look how jammed you are right away. Kind of lost the objectivity of going and getting extended. So we used the pipe, we used the perfect snaps, and then once we got outside, look at there. Beautiful, good rotation, good stride, weight transfer rotation, drive of the hands, level to slightly up, and then the top hand blowing past the bottom, creating great under snap. You went from uh, about 75 miles an hour at that top exit speed to 88, and hitting the ball 360. Amazing, great job. Okay, you got the same thing, trust it, pop it early. To learn to cut the ball is just so much different than lifting it, you know, you know, swing yeah. it up through it. I mean, to, to cut and punch and understand you can cut it and then the, the spin will go off, you know. You, yeah, I, it was a radical change from what I'm used to, but uh, the more I did it, the easier it got. Um, you know, I can't always see what I'm doing wrong, but when you, you tell me you're doing A, B, or C. Getting, uh, that, getting that cut and tomahawk getting snap. That, cut that tomahawk snap and trying to cut through the ball. Um, and, and the biggest uh, reason I know that it works is that I can put a lot of effort into hitting a ball that I feel like I've gotten a hold of, and it goes, you know, 270, 280, 300. But the balls I hit out here that went over the fence, using the proper technique that uh, Bogey showed me, felt like there was no effort at all. I mean, it felt like I was just there coiled up, and then I just went through and hit it, and it, it went a mile with very little effort. It just felt very natural. What was the main reason the 52 core ball at ASA you know, deem that that was the direction they want to go? Well, they were going in the wrong direction. By lowering COR ratings, uh, they were actually making a ball that would stay on your sur the surface of your body or make a bigger impact on, on, on its, a bone uh, because of the lower COR. When they raise the COR rating, it, it, it basically doesn't want to stay on the surface as long. Uh -huh. So it's not going to bore in. It's going to spread out the impact. It's not going to be as damaging. Being a pitcher, I mean, I've been hit with both. I've pitched core in the league back home, and uh, uh, definitely there's a difference between 52 core. They, they both hurt, but you don't get that bone bruise the last two months with the uh, 52 core. You know, so. you, you, could, you can still crack a bone with a 52 core, but the chances of it go down so dramatically. Um, you know, I still think there's some tweaking that needs to be done because the bounces can be really difficult where you're just, you know, you're camping on a ball, or you're, you're charging a ball in the infield, and it just leaps. When you look at the ground, there's nothing there to cause it. So it does, I think we need to do some more refining on that, and I'm looking into that now, but uh, right now I think it's a, it's a great piece for uh, the safety of the game. Anything new coming from Evil Sports, except for you retired and being a bum in Florida? <laughs> um, no, you know, we just look for better core materials, better durability, uh, increasing our cover durability, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, just trying to refine what we already have. I think we're in the right direction.